a pit musician is a big part of who I am. I've been playing in orchestra pits for community theater since I was 15 years old. When I started, of course, I didn't really know how much it would affect my life, but I can safely say that I would not be the person who I was today if I did not spend hours quietly sitting through dialogues in a dark, cramped pit under the stage. So I went to ask some other pit musicians about why they do what they do and why they seem to love it as much as I do. Sunshine, and I play piano and keyboards. Asa Stern, Joe Kelly, French horn. I play woodwinds, flutes, clarinets, saxophones, uh, oboe English horn. I also work as a vocal director and music director. I also music direct. Okay, so this is, we've been down here many times. This is Madeline Graham, who is a fabulous cellist. So what is the interview about? I mean, what's the topic? <laughs> Just off the top of my head, a pit musician is someone who is comfortable enough in their skin and with their instrument that they can follow direction very well, but they can make important in the moment decisions to make sure <laughs> the show does not go down. <laughs> I much prefer playing in a pit to playing in an orchestra or a band. So when you're in a band, you're in a section where there might be three or four other people playing your part. There is usually only one instrument per part, and so you in yourself are the solo, you are the section for that part. So you get to play out where, and be maybe louder or fuller in sound than you could be in a section. This is going to sound selfish, but I like it when there are exposed solo parts. Of course. Pit. I play in the wind symphony where I'm part of a big section. I play in orchestras where I'm playing second clarinet. And pits is where you can be, your, be on your own. Like when I'm doing the pit stuff, um, I have a lot more freedom in how I approach things. I have lots of little weird things I get away with. You have to be confident in what you do, which is, you know, in an orchestra, if you're not confident, you have other players that you can lean on. The music is more challenging oftentimes than other forms. For instance, in concert bands and so forth, sometimes you can kind of coast in a lot of that stuff, but with, with pit orchestras, you can't because there's no place to hide. I remember the first show I ever played, I was a senior in high school. Everybody needs to know, oh, we're jumping, a, we're jumping two measures in an instant. You're listening to not just the orchestra, but everything on stage and everybody slow down or whatever. And so at that very young age, I realized that it was a different kind of talent. I don't think that everyone has the fluid personality type that is required to be a pit musician. There's a lot of qualities that you have to have as a pit musician that an orchestral musician doesn't have. And I think one of the biggest ones is just that ability to be aware of what's happening around you and when things go wrong, being able to adjust to what goes wrong. When something goes wrong, and it always does in every show, they have to be malleable. <laughs> you can't stop. <laughs> I think part of what you really get out of it is you strive for perfection. It's a challenge and it's also stimulating. What I love about it is that it gives me the opportunity to always get better. If you were just trying to hire a Joe Schmo violin player off the street, what would you think would qualify them for being a pit musician? I would say one of the really important things is um, can you work with them? Do they have the kind of personality where you wouldn't grow to hate them? You get locked in a cage with some pretty neat people for you know, what can end up to be a month sometimes. Being a, being a pit musician allows us to work with countless different people with different approaches, different ideas, different forms of aggression and passiveness. A pit musician who plays with lots of different people and lots of different conductors, they're, they're getting an exponential array of tolerances that they have to deal with, right? That's true. Yeah. Some people are really prickly and Conductors don't have time for that. They don't have time to give you a lot of extra attention or to listen to your whining. People don't bellyache about thinking that the music is beneath them. You don't. Yeah. 
You really don't. And maybe you do in professional theater, I don't know. But I have a feeling you don't even then. Because musicians being who they are, being musicians, they they tend not to be full attitude. There's just so many performances and there's so much to talk about because every performance is unique. Um, symphony orchestras, there's competition. And you might never admit to somebody, oh, I'm playing sharp all the time, what's going on? But in a, a show, it's like we are, we're all invested in making sure that, that since we're one person on a part, that it all flows together really well and we trust each other to help. My feeling is that it's, it's all about being in a group and feeling like you're part of something. And even though you don't get a lot of recognition, you don't get a lot of money for it, you get recognition from your peers. It's not like, it's not like you're doing it for the applause. We're not the focus a lot of times, it's what's going on on stage that's the focus. And ideally, if we're doing it right, yeah. we enhance the audience's experience, but they never know what it does. On the one hand, the highest compliment a pit orchestra can get is that they were not noticed. And yet, as musicians, you want to be noticed for the good work that you do, and yet... Hit musician, it's kind of like taking a Hippocratic oh, first do no harm. <laughs> and as long as you don't do any harm, yeah, yeah, you just wonder that everything's fine. You have to accept that you're there to support the people on the stage. Yeah. My favorite show that I've ever done. I was playing clarinet and triangle. No, it was it was it was real, Jordan. It was absolutely real. But the, the show was story of my life. It was a lovely chamber trio that was the third character in the show. The music was the third character. It was that integral to the show. To me, that's what makes a perfect show. There's such a rush when we finish. I mean, the energy is so high and nobody can go to sleep. Everybody's up till all hours. Because it, it is, it's, um, it feels, I, I think playing in a pit, I feel more alive than doing anything else. And I, as a fit musician, have had days where I'm stressed about something and I go to the rehearsal and I'm thinking about, oh, I gotta do this, I gotta do that. Yeah, there have been some shows where I'm like, I am, I can't, I'm counting down the hours of like, I will be finished with this show in three days and, you know, two hours. Yeah. And, Sometimes when we go from show to show, we're hoping to recreate um, that magic when we can. Most times you don't, but you tr you get as close as you can, and, and then when it clicks, you're like, oh, that's why I do this, right? You remember. It brings all kinds of people together with all different kinds of backgrounds, and they are there to create something together. I just love to play, so I could just stay at home and play piano for hours, but I, I, I don't find that as rewarding as being in an orchestra pit, because you're sharing your talent with other people who are just as in love with music as you are. So there you have it. We're a group of people with the same hobby, but I think it's something more than that. The music and the challenge elevates it to where we all know that getting it right or sharing a great moment together is worth all the hard work. Each time we experience our great moments of music together, we're saying that we love each other and that we love our art. I couldn't imagine life without these people. Wait, can I have a concert B flat, please? Okay, this is tomorrow.